Well, what can I say? I hope the last couple of days was better than. <laughs> yes, we go for the better than. And it's me again. I'm so happy to be here, Dr. Kerapes, chiming in on your space and causing you to think as we go through this journey of overcoming disappointments. But what has it been? I, I did a little thing with you last week with, with the iron, and I hope some of you went into your Google and see what, what happened to that, how it worked out, uh, who did it. And we, you, you know that um, was it Henry Seeley way back in the 1800s who decided he would persist. And it took him some time. And by 1920, it was okay. And then this guy, um, using a trick on this guy called Thomas. Um, what was it, Thomas? Oh, I can't remember his name. Uh, I think it's Pierre or Shiv. Uh, you, you can check that with me. But he, he brought in steam uh, in what year that was, 1926. And it was not until 1938 that it became marketable. So you see, there were 12 years of persistence to get this thing right. <laughs> so as I stated to you last time, uh, you, you just don't give up. You have to see what you want and how you, you, you design that uh, for yourselves. So, so therefore, what, what we're looking here, and I use a term last broadcast, um, stick to itiveness. Uh, it's, it's important for you to see that and to how that works in well for you. Because we, we really have to believe in us. We, we, we really have to learn how to work us and, and to really impress upon our hearts that we are going forward. Nobody can tell you that you are a failure and you cannot make yourself a failure. That's the next thing, you know. Some people say you're a failure, but then you make yourself a failure. So if somebody doesn't have the same criteria like you, and of course you did not satisfy their criteria, and of course they put you below what they consider the, a pass mark or, or an assessment grade of success, that doesn't say you are the failure. You have not just met their requirements, but you have yours, and you have to reassess that to go forward. Now, as I said in our last broadcast, that it is important for us to go to, for you, for me have to have done that, for you to have as a precursor the concept of mental health. It's important for us to see how it affects our mental health if we do not address it urgently. Now, disappointment is a good word. As I said, it has its good in terms of it causes you to reassess, redesign, and reaffirm. But it also could be bad in terms of causing you to be angry, frustrated, hurt, painful, and, and we, we can go down the road. And by that time, you nothing. So we need to really begin to define the mental fortitude that is important for us as we go on. How is this affecting your own self-awareness and self-image? And those things are important as we learn to regulate, as we learn to bring our emotions into a space where they are taking us forward. One of the things that we have to look at is that we, we sometimes cannot seem to remove our minds from the thing that disappointed us. And we, 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 we rehearse it and we nurse it and we rehearse it and we nurse it and we nurse it and rehearse it. And that's, that's a dangerous thing because that could put you in a, in a hearse. Yes, because it could, it could take you to a place where your hormones are so dis in all over the place, uh, disruptive, and your adrenaline is up and down, and the blood pressure goes up, and you become depressed, and you can walk, and the other organs come up, and next thing you know, you know more. Because you have not handled the disappointment in a way where it takes you forward, but rather brings, brings you. So that we, we, we don't want you to be unproductive. We don't want you to lose who you are because of that word disappointment, because somebody did not agree with what you had offered. You have to learn how to come out of that unproductive period, out of that productive mode, and come into a place where you are beginning to see yourself 
going for, as I said last uh, podcast, you can see yourself redesigning. Oh, well, if I did it so in the first place, I, I don't think I could do it any better. You can. What you did now is now going to be assessed to see how better it can be done. As I said, that that guy, uh, Seely, he was a worked harder than I am, and Thomas also. And, and you know that the guy with the light bulb, you know the guy with the fridge. I could tell anybody who was worked technology, and even the people today in Google and and, um, and Microsoft, they are constantly working. And that's why our phones, hmm, yes, yeah, the same phone we use every day, and always love it up top. That is continually being processed. And even though when there's a failure, you do not know because they keep and then when that is out go it's it's not just about going from you know from one to two to three to four in terms of the product. It's about learning how to make it better because it becomes unsuccessful after a while. It, 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 it you see no value. It does not identify. And technology is controlling our minds in terms of the find out. Hey, I can, it, this is the word nothing. So you say, you know, I can hear you say, I'm just disappointed. I bought that phone. Look, I buy the phone and I can't even use it. No, you have to work along with the fact that somebody else has recognized that they can do something better and made you feel that your phone is not similar. So it can be used. We see, we are competing, therefore, in a global market. And we are definitely pressed into a cultural dimension, which continuously gnaws at our self-awareness and our self-esteem and an understanding that of who we are and see ourselves either worthy and or, or unworthy. We have to overcome that. So that we have to put ourselves into that place of motivation, bringing ourselves out of this disappointment, bringing ourselves out of that new, of that expectation that was realized into a new expectation and realize that I am motivating me. Now, you could ask the question, Dr. Nice, how do you motivate me in a time of weakness? How am I to be motivated in this time when I don't really feel to do anything. Don't talk to me. I am failing. How many times am I going to go to this interview? How many times? Hold on. Hold on. How many minutes in one hour? And you know that repeats itself all the time. Every hour has the same amount of minutes. <laughs> but you know the hours can increase one, two, three. And we call that time. And by the time 24 of those hours go, we have another day. So there's always an evolution as we go along of what's happening with us. We have to see that productivity is in a chain of time. And therefore, that ought to motivate me to do better and best. I am going for because otherwise, I am going to find myself in a slump where I am so frustrated and so... De demotivated, that I don't even know how to smile anymore. My smile goes. My joy goes. And don't try to make me laugh. You have no idea how I'm feeling now. None. You see me? You see me? It's by that gets swallowed up in a hole. Well, some people swallow themselves up in the old hole. It's called suicide. Some people get depressed, clinically depressed, and they withdraw into dark rooms. They stop eating. They're not sleeping. And, and you realize that some people sometimes are very traumatized because of that disappointment. It's not just you didn't get it, but because it's... It, it was the expectation was hinged so much into a more acceptable and productive future that because there is a crash, because there is this void now, there's, the bubble has burst. It's like it's better the earth cover me up. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on! Don't get covered up. Don't 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 get covered up. Don't get covered up. 
there is still hope. Your joy can be revived. Why? Because we can believe in ourselves. And we can see the better and best in terms of how we redesign, as I shared last broadcast, how we redevelop, bring our circumstances into place where we are seeing new strategies and systems to cause us to go forward. Please, please, because we don't want to get into that place where we cannot seem to, to sorry, put this way, where we begin to say that we can't move over. You know, just now, see, I could be disappointed here that my pocket cushion is not still, but I haven't done anything to pin it, for it to stay. So I'm not going to be disappointed with that. I want to make sure that the next day I have a pin. But at this time, I'm going to say, okay, I can still feel free to make it known and to keep the aesthetic right, the fashion in place. <laughs> I want to see a simple thing like that. Or because you can start blaming the choice of jacket or the cut or the, the tailor or the designer. But no, you do not need to do that. You could simply say, next day and I will do better. For now, I'm accepting that it's shifting. So that I keep my joy. I keep my effervescence and I continue with what I'm doing, talking with you. <laughs> so I, I want to see that there are ways of coping to overcome the trauma of disappointment and to cause you to come into that space where you are not subjecting yourself to no joy, which brings you to sadness, which brings you to depression. Because you are so angry sometimes that you are you begin to stir those negative emotions and there is that work in your brain that shuts down your milk and you cannot find that joy and therefore you are in this issue of fear trying to fight and flight and flight and fight. I want to go but I Afraid, I will do it again. Afraid, it will happen again. No, 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 no need to fear a repeat. We are working a process. Are you hearing me? We are working a process. And we are therefore going forward. So I want to see that you are prone maybe to fight that depression. And some of us, we get to the point where we can't seem to find a, a, a way out. I, I've had too many failures. I, nobody cares about me. And I'm afraid now to expose myself to these failures as people say I am no good. I don't want to hear that. So it's better I'm not here. And that's where some of people are pushed into this, what we call suicide ideation. Because people are, cannot cope with the negativities around us because there has been so many disappointments in our lives. Hold on. There's no need for you to think that way. Here, Dr. Nellis, you were not created as a loser. No. You know your circumstances. You know your own socialization. You know the exposures you've had. What we are here doing is helping you reassess those circumstances and situations, reassess your traditions and cultures and come into a place where you can learn how to do it better, best. Again, better, best continues to be in a function of your criteria, not somebody else's. So you could always say, so how I know it's best when nobody likes it? Hold on. How can I cause you to like it? Do you know about marketing? You ever see the television? 
They make you feel that some products are the best by the way they advertise it and the way they keep speaking about it. And while they are speaking and advertising, even though they, they, the, the, the company knows it's not as good as, they are constantly in the background in the labs looking for the best. So when it does come out, hmm, and, and then it improves. And you see on the tins, on the labels, improved. Except, and you see, new new things, new added something. Why is it, it's, it's nicely put, but so that nobody will say it was a failure. It's not gone to the dumps. It was used, but now they've added. They've put it up a notch, two notches. And you say, oh yeah, you buy it. Even though sometimes it's a little more expensive, you scrap at it because you like, you like the good and you know the better will be good. And then by the next couple of months again, it gone to best. We have to see that in our own lives, we are not created for what? Failure. We are not created for nothing that does. No, we are created that we can show forth the excellency of who, who created us, our Father, who art and is in heaven, and who has come down to earth to be in us and working with us. So he's not going to create failures. We have to understand that there is that enemy and that contradiction of our lives that works through these dynamics of education and employment and assessment and family cultures and traditions that makes us feel that we are in a tight spot. But I want you to see the victory that is already in you. You are created. You have been what? Created in his image and likeness. And you recognize I'm bringing in the scripture here very nicely. For those of you who may not align yourself with those scriptures, they are real. They're very real. And they have helped me in my own assessment of not feeling that I am nothing. I could was I remember in my early teens living disappointment, even though that I had championed the cause of at the, at that exam that takes you from primary school to secondary school. I championed the cause, definitely my first choice. Brilliant boy. But as you go along, you recognize that you have to work out the better and the best. And I, you know, I do, well, look at the grades I have. And I went through life working and seeing myself improve and recognizing, hey, Kenneth, Kenneth, there is more than failure in you. As a matter of fact, there is no failure in you. There may be not an achievement according to somebody's perspective, but there is that concept that would not cause me to be depressed and harassed. I'm helping myself, you see? Example again, you keep just keeping it up. Maintaining the standard. That, that's what we have to do. We have to keep making the standard real. Otherwise, it could always be dropping now. And if it does, in the meantime, as I said, if the, you do something to f fix it, you just have to keep working at it to keep the joy up. Uh, by the way, if it disappears, I am not going to lose my joy because I have already assessed it and said the next time, I will do X to avoid that. So you see, it's all in how we approach the system for change and, and, and understand the realities of where we are going. It's important for us to see that we have to work out this whole concept of, of suffering. How do I overcome those feelings? How do I persist in establishing the victory? Now, we talked about depression, we talked about suicidal ideation, we can also talk about other symptoms of anxiety, you know, which is a which, which, which whereby we are so in, in a space where we are become, we can become paranoid, we can become obsessive, we, we can become there's so many other variants, variables that are attached in those words of depression and anxiety that we our behaviors sometimes become unacceptable. And I, and, I, and I dare say that we have to learn how 
to process us to overcome. One of the things I want to share with you today is that there is hope. Why? Because you have talents, you have abilities. You just have to learn to work them out systematically. Now, you may not like that word. And sometimes I don't like it myself. You know, you always be, oh, we can do it all. Let's do it anyway. No, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. As I said, minutes, seconds, minutes, hours, it all has a structure, you know. You put the water, you light the, you light the stove, the bird on the, the, on the stove, you put a pot on it, and the, the temperature increases. It just doesn't get to 100 or, or, or it just doesn't come to 212 Fahrenheit. All of a sudden, no, there is, there, there, it's incremental. You, you understand that? Yes, and January doesn't just jump into to October. It's incremental, February, March, April. So there, there, there is always an incremental process that we are exposed to in order to find the end or to find the better, or the best. So, so therefore, if I take the concept of time in, in terms of achieving something, I know there's going to be a process of minutes and hours and, and days. So, so I have to learn how to work that. So therefore, I have to see myself incrementally getting into that place of success. I, I have to realize that I can work that very strongly and come into that place. So therefore, I am not hopeless. There's hope. Why? Because there is that process. So therefore, if I feel that, that I'm going to be, if I am depressed, please, you, you, you don't have to stay there. No, that may be so because, okay, you were traumatized, fine. You lose the equilibrium, there's that, this in France, right? You know, yeah, I don't know how. But let, let me just drop this in here. In the whole uh, philosophy of reassessing trauma and coming out of it, we look at the butterfly effect. We have a larvae that turns into caterpillar. The caterpillar gets into a pupa. The pupa get. excuse me, there are changes. Do you think larvae is going to say, oh, I'm a larvae. I will never become a fly. There is the expectancy. There is that germ. There is that, that, that larvae which is going to get there. And it has to go through processes that does not look butterfly. That's not English. The larvae does not resemble butterfly. The caterpillar does not resemble butterfly. The puma does not resemble butterfly. But there is there, 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 the processes. And, and we can say that you could become disappointed when you recognize, I'm a caterpillar. Why am I not a butterfly? Hey, hold on. The best is here to come. So I want to encourage you as we go along this journey, that you have to see yourself full of hope. Disappointment must not be the end. No, we have to overcome that and find ourselves in that place of joy, coming out of that place of unproduction and lack of motivation, and yet see ourselves get into that space where, yes, I can be that butterfly. Oh, butterfly. How are you thinking it? Without saying, oh gosh, no, no, I'm not getting angry. I'm not looking at I'm just maintaining the butterfly. <laughs> the beauty. So, as we look into the next couple of days ahead and weeks ahead, I want you to recognize you, and I repeat this over what I repeat last broadcast, you have to see the expectation of your future, what it is you want. You want that iron, you want electric iron, you want steam iron, go for it. You want a bulb, whatever happens, on t you have to keep going and persisting in working out to bring that change in the reality of your tomorrow, the success, the reality of your achievement. Lavi does not look like a butterfly. Caterpillar does look like a butterfly. But you know the caterpillar is a butterfly. So let's work out the process with that hope that you are going to be fluttering with such beauty 
within your environment and making the world better. Disappointment? Hmm. That's going to be a word you don't know just now, but success? You always need it. Because why? It is a continuum of bringing change to the development, confidence to be strong. Know who you are. God's blessing to you. As I tune out today, Dr. Niles, remember, you will be a butterfly.